Hey everyone, so as some of you that watch my vlogs probably know, I've been making built-in bookshelves in my book room for like three months now. It's a project that I knew I wanted to take on. I've always wanted built-in bookshelves. I've always wanted a window seat. I've always just wanted that vibe. And I knew I was gonna do it when we got into our house, but I did not think it was gonna take me this long. And originally, I was just vlogging the process, like as I did it within my weekly vlogs. But I feel like for like this last bit of it because we are pretty much closing in on the end. I actually wanted to make a full video of it. Before we jump into what I still need to get done with it and like the actual footage of me finishing this up, I am gonna do just like a really fast recap of just some of the vlog footage over the past few months so that if you haven't been watching you can kind of catch on. I cut wood successfully I think. <sighs> now to do the dry fit. Cool. So the bookshelves will fit inside of them. I want you to know, um, I ended up deciding against doing one in the back. I want it flush because I've decided to actually cut out the hole in the bookshelf for that. So yeah. But I just put those frames into place and they look great. They're like the exact measurement that I taped out. So I guess measuring is for something. And then I'm actually going to be drilling the front of the these bottom boards into the bookshelves themselves, as well as maybe the sides. I didn't want to take out the baseboards. That is technically how I should have done this, but Adam looked really hesitant when I said that. So I figured I'm not going to, but I think I still will drill into them because I can always patch it up. I put like the mounting on the top of those. Now I just need to find those beams to go in between that and the wall to secure it. And then I'll be getting like molding to put after the framing on this side. And then there's still the window seat to contend with. I probably will be doing this at the same go. I just, I still really don't know what I'm doing with the window there, seat. I actually I did. did the pocket hole things. Uh, sorry for anyone who actually knows how to do this that's watching this and is cringing. Let's screw some wood. Okay, love that. I specifically drilled this like this because I knew that if I wanted something to be between these, this would have to stick out a little bit more so that it got into the bottom wood. And now I'm thinking about it, and that means that I'm gonna have to lay these flat, like, this way. I don't know how that changes things. I don't know. Let me measure st stuff. I'm kind of getting hungry, too. I need to look at those articles again. Before I did the top part, I put in things to stabilize it. There's gonna be more than these. I just wanted some general ones. Honestly, I wanted these to go farther back, but then I remembered that there's screws in the bottom and I didn't wanna be screwing into screws. So it's starting to look like something, right? Right? <laughs> this was a little bit of a journey. It is now dark, but I have my perfectly measured, shit, perfectly pocket hold, shit, wood chips come out little beans. Oh, and I got a splinter for sure, for sure. So, I want more things for it to like stabilize to. I'm gonna do one right here and right here on either side. Let's show you the finished for this week product. That's it. That's all I've done. It looks barely different, right? I'll show you close up. So I did it this way because um that's the part that's gonna have the most pressure, if any. And that's why it's not in the middle. Don't don't come at me. All of these little cute support beams. These freaking impossible, stupid little framing bits. This one I actually went to war with. Like, like look at all that. Look at all that. You should see the screw, poor thing. I went to war. I have no idea what I'm doing. It feels more solid though, for sure. <laughs> You probably can't see me. I tried turning on a light and it's not bright. I don't know how loud I'm talking. I'm not taking these off. I just spent the last like hour and a half more sanding and then cleaning <laughs> from the sand. But now it's ready for the board. Like the board that's gonna like make it look all like a thing. I don't know. It probably doesn't look any different.
for now, I put up those boards. So yeah, I put the siding up. One right there. The other one is covered up by those lights, but it's on the other side. Um, I will still be having to sand them down because if you can tell, like, there's a small little lip that goes over on both sides. The part that I think I'll be cutting right now is the one that'll go right up to there, which means I have to cut the two by fours for this little area. That's what we're doing. So that's why my background is this way, like a random ring light, a ladder, my bookshelves are curtained off. Those bookshelves will be staying in this room, by the way. I didn't want to do like a full all the way around the room thing just because I don't know if we'll always use this room for a book room. And so I just wanted it to be like an accent wall. Here was my idea. I drew it up in Procreate. I've mostly kind of stuck to what that is. I've been learning a lot in this process. It was not as easy as I thought it was going to be. I still need to make the top of my chest to be able to sit on. I still need to add on the molding on all the sides to kind of make it look more cohesive. I need to really everything that is more of the aesthetically cohesive stuff still needs to be done. Today, I am just kind of trying to get some measurements down. I bought the last of my wood a couple weeks ago now. I was planning on doing this for my birthday, it did not happen. It's about kind of like cutting all of it down to the right size, putting it into place, and finally caulking everything, priming it, painting it, and buying a cushion for the bench. So just to give you an idea of where it's at right now, we got up that molding a little bit ago. I still need to like finish it off on the side. I need to cover this little strip up with the same kind of board that I'm using there just to make it one solid piece. That's like the division between the shelves. I need to add on this molding on this side and this side and then put a little foot on it because it's not technically going to be long enough. I need to add in the molding for the baseboards all the way around. <sighs> I need to cut up this bench top so that it actually fits into here and I need to wood glue it all together overnight at least before I do anything else to it and then I'll be needing to actually piano hinge it which that's the piano hinge right through here yeah i guess i guess that's where we're at right now i feel like i'm trying to make it sound easier than it'll probably end up feeling this might be a little bit of a process but stay tuned you probably can't <laughs> give me a moment so right here where like the wood is the full molding would not fit so oops. so i'm gonna be cutting it right there and then continuing it right here um with a smaller strip I could probably just like jigsaw it out, but I don't have a jigsaw yet, so we're not gonna do that, obviously. Let's do it, dude. Where'd my scrunchie go? Well, I'll find my scrunchie, I'll put on different clothes, I'll meet you in the garage. got a lot done today. The bigger bench piece is actually sealing right now. I wood glued everything together, taped 
first then wood glue then put in the little clamp things which honestly i thought the clamps would be like like a twisting kind of thing to like actually clamp it together but instead i just had to like push really hard and i used my car like to push myself and i, I think i dented it with my butt <laughs> so let's mark off on my checklist what we did get done today i did cut out the yucca board cut excess off of the poplar board cut excess off of the longer poplar board too cut excess off inner molding pieces um, the base planks for the left side and the base planks for the right side. Wood glue, two longer poplar boards, wood glue and screw, stationary poplar board did not do that. I have completed seven steps, which isn't bad, I guess. And then I did do like a dry run of like the base things that are going to go under the, the molding and that fits. I mean, it was a little bit tight too. I don't know what it is with my measuring. I think in the beginning when I was doing my measuring, everything would come out just a little bit shorter than what I needed it. And so like I overcompensate now, I think, and I just like put the blade like one tick in the millimeter side over in everything. And then it's kind of screwing me over too. <laughs> if any of you have any tips on how to like measure better to cut wood better, I'm all ears because apparently I'm not good at it. Well, tomorrow though, I'm going to do the rest of what was supposed to be day one, which was like nailing and sticking everything that I did cut into place. Welcome to the next day. I did check on the wood glued planks. I'm kind of bummed because I don't know why it escaped me to like pocket hole screw them together before doing the wood glue. It would have just been like an extra secure fit, but it's fine. Wood glue is supposed to be really sturdy. I mean, from everything that I've read about it, it's technically stronger than the wood itself. So I'm sure it's fine, but like I'm kind of annoyed at myself for forgetting that. So yeah, let's just, let's just get into it. I need to, I need to get my headphones and start playing music too, or else I'll get bored. measured out the baseboards, I got most of the stuff up, I'm gonna cut these pieces, maybe cut the baseboards, and my battery's dead, so that's like kind of it. Maybe I'll show you where we're at after. Oh, also, I got wood glue in my hair. Um, I put oil in it right away, and I put it in a bun, and I like brushed it through really well, so like hopefully nothing happens, but if I have to cut my hair, now you guys know why. Okay, quite a bit has happened, actually, since we last talked. I put up the sides and then the bottoms to those sides and then I cut up and put in the baseboards which actually I measured everything right but I still ended up having to add in a little piece in the middle of the long piece I don't know I don't know I think that once I caulk it it'll look fine right now it's really bugging me but obviously I'm not gonna get to that step until everything's sanded so Today, I actually just finished making templates because, silly me, before I put in the bottoms or like literally anything on the sides of the bookshelves, I should have created like a little strip of yucca board to cover the, the wood bases and to like fill in any space that might have needed it. I should have done that like a long time ago, but I didn't. So instead I had to get my little like artist brain working and make these very thorough templates because every time I cut something I swear it doesn't turn out right so I'm starting to make templates <laughs>
finally sanded down the last piece that'll go on my chest. So I wood glued it all together and then the wood glue was super messy. I knew I was gonna have to sand it. I still need to do the last cut on it, but I left it on because I wanna be able to like thoroughly measure this out. There's sanding to be done in this room too, but I'm not ready for that yet, so. Oh, that was terrifying, but it holds. Is it just me or is this like not looking bad? Ow. So this is actually looking like a thing. Don't look at all that. <laughs> I've left it like this for a week. I sanded it down. All that's really left is I still need to actually cut the joined piece of wood just right there so that it fits. So the next step is caulking, which that part doesn't need to be cut for that. So I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna give it my best shot. I've never done it before. I dusted this the day that I did all the sanding, but obviously dust settles. So I'm gonna grab another thing to dust it off one more time and then we're gonna try caulking. I have it set up correctly. It said for like acrylic and silicone, you want the dripless setting turned on and you want it on like the lowest pressure setting. Um, and I already pulled it back. And then I know this thing is to like poke the hole. I saw somewhere that if you poke a hole in the back, an area for like the pressure to get out, then it should just go all the way without like having like any skipping. So we'll just cut the tip. Cool. And then you use the thing to poke a hole through like the hole that you just made. Cause there's like a foil at the bottom, apparently. Oh, fuck. Oh, this is like a really big one. Oh, oops. Wait. <sighs> fuck. I already opened this. I got the wrong size, apparently. I got the 29 ounce. This is what I have. Um, I already opened this and I really don't want it to go to waste. So everything that I've read said it's not gonna work. I wanna preface that. But um, I'm gonna give it a shot. I don't think it'll work. Okay. <laughs> I have to go to the hardware store. Okay. I did something I rarely ever do. I actually returned the thing that didn't work for me. And I got the right one. So hopefully this didn't dry up. I like wrapped it in plastic. Looks like it's still wet. That fits. Okay. Well, let's give it a good old college try, right? I don't know where to start actually. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start at the top, that way if I make a mistake, it's harder to tell. Oh, you didn't see any of that. That was a struggle bus, but it kind of worked. <laughs> I'm gonna let you go and I'm gonna try and figure this out. That took hours upon hours and it turned out awful. <laughs> it wasn't until the very end, and I do mean the very last thing that I was doing, that I remembered you're supposed to put tape down for the clean lines. So yeah, you can imagine how messy it might look. And it's fine, it's okay. Cause I'm gonna paint over it anyways. Uh, yeah, it's not great. Mm -hmm. It's like not great as I've already said, but I'm gonna be painting over it. I feel like I don't wanna redo it. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be totally honest. I don't even know where I'd go about how, like how I would redo it. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I'll look up some ways to like try and clean up those lines because like I don't know if you can like this is like a prime example But listen, I'm gonna be painting over it The only thing is, is that I know that it's gonna like pop up under like the texture is gonna show up in the paint But it's something that I can personally live with Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to leave it at that because I, I don't want to redo it I really don't it really wasn't until the very end that I just remembered. I'm like, oh shoot Tape. Tape's the secret weapon. That's what I'm supposed to be using this whole time. I don't know, dude. I don't even want to think about it. I think I'm gonna play Pokemon because I've been doing that lately. I just got back home from work. Uh, I want you to know, this is the first time I'm looking at it in like the last three days, and it's actually not as bad as I thought it was that night, so I'm not pissed anymore. <laughs> but I am gonna go over a few of the places that um, it kind of like sank in because caulking does shrink, so I have my iPad to watch Shameless because that's been my comfort show as of late. I don't think I'll film it just because you know I'm, I'm really not good at this and I feel like I shouldn't like even show what I'm doing because it's not right or it might be right but like don't look at this for this okay so hey by the way I dyed my hair um but I actually just finished taping off all the areas that I don't want to get paint on um because I brought up my primer my paint primer right there 
and I think I want to just start painting it. I'm not going to really be getting to the inside of the chest. That part, it's going to stay rough in general until until later. For right now, everything's taped off except for this little area right there because like it's like a funny little like group. So I'm just gonna have to be really careful with that area. But I taped off the top as well because I want to paint this the same color as the bookshelves, but obviously not this, which I taped the floor as well. Ideally, I would have a tarp, but I'm a little short on a tarp. So let's just kind of get this going. It's Sounds liquidy. It's been in my garage for a while, but I brought a mixer, so how do I... All right, we got my stirring stick. Let's give it a good stirring. I'm like getting really anxious. I should be doing this over a different surface. <laughs> I'm gonna do it in the chest because this will eventually be painted anyways. So if it gets some paint in it, that's fine. You know, I know it's just like something in my brain. Like the thickness of paint just looks yummy. Is that weird? That's weird. Yeah, that's weird. Okay. Just looks like, I don't know, like icing. <laughs> I won't eat it. Don't eat it. It's definitely toxic. All right, I think it's mixed up enough. Now I'm just gonna pour some out. I actually don't know how much I'll be needing. So we'll start with that much. If I need more, I'll pour out more. I'm a messy painter. I need to remember that about myself. Should probably have different pants on. And I got this little foam roller that says it's good for cabinet and hardware. You can't see me. So let's just pop it open, why don't we? And just get started. Okay, it took three days, but the primer is on, so I'm gonna let it dry, and then I still need to get normal paint, sand it down in between coats, and then start the real painting. It's looking like a thing now. Eh? Okay, I'm filming on my phone right now because, anyways, I finished up the caulking and doing the priming for all of this. And so now the next step is actually just going to be to sand it down. I'm going to be sanding it with a 600 grit. So we're going to sand it down because later today I think we're going to go get the paint finally. And maybe tonight I'll do my first coat of real paint. It's already looking so good. Uh, I also need to get the stain because I did decide I'm going to be staining the wood top for the bench but like already this is just really good so so the sanding's done and i'm actually trying to pick between these are my finalists i like licorice which is like this deep almost black with a hint of brown gray i don't know if you can tell i actually really like this is kind of the idea that i thought I might have for this when i was deciding that i might not paint it blue now shadow mountain is like another shade of deep almost purpley gray so like you can kind of see the differences here licorice almost has like a hint of green compared to this one hmm. and then there's black forest which i actually really like i think that either way i might get a sample of this just because it's like this deep black with like a hint of like a deep green in it and i do really like it i don't know though if i want it for this not sure so I think I'm between these two. Licorice is obviously deeper than Shadow. Actually, Black Forest is as well. Look at these compared to each other. I feel like this one almost has like more of a hint of blue than licorice does. I'm really attracted to this licorice color. <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking licorice. Just to compare, so licorice in comparison to satin black, the warmth that pulls from it versus like something that's supposed to be like completely black. <sighs> I think I like this. I don't know. I don't know, but we're about to find out, I guess. 
So that took an entire extra day that I originally thought it wouldn't because we got to Home Depot yesterday and they were like, oh uh, yeah, I can definitely look that color up for you. Cause I ended up deciding on one called Chimney that I found on Pinterest, but they were like, but our system's down. Like we don't have internet right now. And like, they couldn't even take uh, card payments or anything. So they couldn't look up the paint, even if I had cash. They were like, it'll probably be back up in an hour. We went and like ran a couple of other errands, then came back and they're like, yeah, it's still not up. So I waited until today and I got the paint. I got a few other things too. And I'm a little nervous. Cause the one picture that I saw that bear themselves had posted. The color that I chose was like almost like a taupey dark gray, like with a hint of brown, you know? When they made it and put the little swatch on top, I was like, that's kind of bluish, like dark blue gray. And every other picture I've looked up since, it's more of like a dark grayish blue. So I don't know. I grabbed it anyways, cause I don't like confrontation and I didn't know what other color to choose instead. So let's hope I like it. Okay, I put it in here, that way if anything gets inside, it's fine. So, by the way, I did get cabinet and door paint uh, because again, this is gonna have a lot of wear and tear, so better than normal paint. Okay, ooh. Yeah, it's definitely like a blue-gray, right? Um, you know, I think it'll work. <laughs> I think it's going to work because I don't feel like figuring out what else to get, you know? I guess we're just gonna kind of go for it. first coat it's on and the parts that look a little bit more solid like right there and right there I did a little bit of a second coat because I had some paint left in my bucket that I didn't want to waste but it's actually <laughs> looking really cool it's not what I was planning because I kind of wanted more of like a brownish gray dark gray but like this is nice and so for tonight I bid you adieu I'm gonna actually I don't think I got that much I got a reasonable amount of paint on me. So I'm gonna wash it up. I've been at this for like six hours. Yeah, I love it. So I have yet to find the charger for the batteries for my camera. So we're still filming on my phone for right now until I figure out where the heck I stored that away. Today's the day after the first coat. Um, I'm actually gonna go over it just with some 400 grit sanding paper and like a hand sander. And I really just want to smooth it down a little bit before I go in with the second layer. <laughs> hand sanders. Adam, can you hold this open while I stick this in? <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'm hot, I look a mess, 
but the second coat is on and it looks really good. Like there are some spots where I think a third coat will be needed. Ironically enough too, this color is actually <laughs> the color that I originally had planned for this room. And that wasn't my intention in the end. My intention was like a warm, almost black brown. Oh, I need to go over those little like rivets with a small brush like I did on this side. Earth, well, it's the day after. So, ow, it's looking really good. But when I look up close, there is definitely so, still some spots that like need to be coated more thoroughly. So I'm gonna try to get as much done as I can. I'm not gonna film it. I still have not found my charger for my camera. I don't know where it is. I'm a little stressed by it. I'm sure I'm gonna, it's gonna it's gonna pop up, you know? So I'm just gonna go and do this. Just to kind of show you up close, like this is just one of the examples of how like the paint isn't fully coating everything yet, but I think after the third coat, it'll be it'll be pretty perfect. It's done. So I just finished the third coat over the whole thing. And I really do feel like that is all it's going to need. I do have more paint just in case, but like it's probably it. The inside, uh, I haven't decided yet if I want to paint it blue as well. The inside is something I'm leaving for another project when I'm more uh, lively. <laughs> so for right now, I'm just going to let everything dry before actually taking the tape off. I'm going to... Stain this, pieces of wood, these pieces of wood, and attach them together using a piano hinge. Uh, after that, this video is probably done. I mean, I did want to get some sort of like cover for this, something cushiony, but I don't know. Guess who found her camera charger? It was in a very obvious place. There's that. It's the next day, and we're gonna take the tape off and do the staining for the, the regular piece of like bench wood. Oh, what's that? I don't know how long the staining will take. And it has to be dry before I can like screw into the wood. I debated doing the screwing of the piano hinge before staining, but I decided against it because that means that like whatever part is covered by the piano hinge will not be stained. And I would have to like cover up that piano hinge. So we're not doing it that way. I'm gonna set you down. Let's do this part first. That was just a small one. I actually think I might leave the one on the rug since I still have to go back over the baseboards with white, so. And some of these parts had already gotten painted when I added on the paint, which is why I have to go back over this in white. Look at that. satisfying. <laughs> There's definitely some spots, obviously the baseboards and then the corner areas on the shelves that I need to retouch with white because I couldn't tape that part off because of weird molding. I probably could have figured out a way. I didn't. Basically, we're done. There's like a couple spots where the tape failed and also some spots where it was a little bit too much. So I'm gonna go over some of the white areas with the dark paint too. So I'm just gonna do that. And the last small bit. And we'll stain the wood. I think I'm also going to cut up the piece that's supposed to go under those two wood boards and get it in place, so. Okay, so actually, I didn't realize how like twisted or torqued, I guess, like the piece of wood that I did get to be the two by four that goes right under there was. So I'm actually straightening it out right now. I like soaked it a little bit in some water, put a whole bunch of clamps to get it 
to be straight. So I'll need to give it a lot of time to dry probably the rest of today. So instead, we're gonna start with the staining. Um, I brought up this one. I actually got aged walnut for this and I do like it, but I've actually already stained something else with it in the house and it has like more of a warm hue. And from what I remember, this has like a more olive-y hue to it. So we're gonna start with this and if anything, I'll add the other one on, on top of it. Since Leia's. color this is turning out. So the wood is poplar and some of the areas it's kind of like not taking as well. Maybe I should have used wood conditioner. Maybe I have it. I could have, but I didn't. But this is actually kind of the color that I was imagining in my head. I wanted it to look like, like a library, you know? And honestly, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing the white baseboard and I did it that way for a reason. I did want it to match the white baseboards that are all around the room because I figured it would be weird if they were painted, but I kind of wish that I had painted it the same color as the shelves, but this is looking really good. I am gonna let this dry. I'm gonna walk out of the room too because it's pretty fumey in here. And we'll do another coat in two to three hours. I'm not crazy worried right now about the bottom of the piece because I actually, once I get everything nailed together and can like unhinge it, that's when I'm gonna paint the bottom. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of where it's at right now. You see, I feel like the white baseboards should be that color. I actually painted all the baseboards the same color as the shelves. I just felt like the white really stood out and it was giving me sailor vibes and that was not, that was not what I wanted. <laughs> so I gave it two coats. It's drying right now. I just gave it the second coat and I really, really like it. It just, it blends seamlessly now. I put another coat of stain on the wood this morning and I love the color it turned out. It's warm, deep, nice, aged brown. In person, I feel like on camera it's coming a little bit more warm, but that's okay. And I think that now what I'm gonna do, I've let it set all day. I'm going to give it a coat of polyurethane. I don't always do this with stained wood, although technically like maybe you should, just cause I don't like the shininess of it. This is the semi-gloss, but still feels shiny. But I'm definitely gonna do it with this because I'm gonna be sitting on it so much. And even though it is a hardwood, it still is getting scratched up just like with normal things. So polyurethane will definitely help. The window's open because there was a lot of fumes in here yesterday after the staining. It's the next day. <laughs> this is like exactly how I imagined it. When I first decided I wanted to stain the wood, this is exactly how I imagined it. Ironically enough, I didn't need the stain that I bought. I used the one that I already had, so. I'm gonna take the tape off from the floor. I'm a little nervous because I think there's some places where the tape maybe wasn't under the baseboards, so it might be on the carpet, but um, this isn't moving, so that's, fi that's fine. I've decided. <laughs> Guys, it's looking really good. You can't see it yet, but. This is, y'all. So. 
that is how that turned out. It's, in my opinion, impeccable. I'm obsessed. Like this, this, ah, uh, guys. I did a thing. <laughs> This is sick. I've let this also set for three days, which I think is like a good amount of time to dry. And I'm shocked by how well this turned out. At the same time that I'm like, this is exactly what I imagined. Like it's, I, it's not done yet, technically. I mean, this is so cool. <laughs> it was a freaking trip. It was so hard. I messed up so many times, but I've learned so much from this. Okay, I think today is the day that we're finishing this project. It has been officially two weeks of curing time for the paint. I'm gonna do the, the fingernail test. Let's do it over here. Like, <laughs> it still kind of shows up. I don't know what to do about that then. Maybe I have really sharp fingernails. Have we ever considered that as a possibility, you know? So I finally cut the two by four that I wanted to put under this area to give it just an extra bit of support. And then last night while doing it, I also stained it with the same wood stain that I used on here. I only gave it one coat. I think I'm only going to give it one coat. It was more to just have something on it than anything else. But I've been looking it up today on how to put a piano hinge in because I felt like I understood it in theory until like last night when I was staring at it. I was like, this makes no sense to me anymore. And I think I get it. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, that is better. <laughs> Cause like it has this area right here for the front, but it was the middle that was like bowing under my weight. It is better. So anyways, we're gonna install this hinge. I did buy another one because this one's actually not technically long enough. I mean, it's gonna go right here and then it'll open. Uh, and then I did buy another one to be able to cut for that last few inches of space like six inches i think it is i clamped it into place i actually brought another one because i wanted the middle to also have support i did actually buy a self-centering hinge bit we're gonna find out how to use it but it's made for this like centered pilot hole thing at least i hope it is i kind of forgot but i was i wanted this in black and ended up getting silver and I was like, I'll spray paint it, which that would have been dumb because spray paint on a hinge, I feel like would not work well. The tip that I saw was to just do three holes at first, um, like the first one, a middle one, and then the last one. So I think that's what I'll do. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing this while listening to some Taylor Swift. A few hours later, a lot of sawing, some careful maneuvering, uh, and a lot of distractions later. Ta-da! She's got a hinge. All right, moment of truth. Nice. That's actually pretty good. Nice. It's holding. It didn't bow at all. I hung up the curtain as well the rod at least for it. I realized I hadn't cleaned the curtains in those two weeks. I just didn't, I don't know, I didn't think. So they're in the wash right now. And then once they dry, I do actually have to cut the bottoms and then put them up. And I do eventually want to get like a different bar that's going to hold like heavy curtains and stuff like that. And I still need to make the cover technically for this, but this video I think is officially done. Uh, wait, actually one more test. I placed this on here when all of this started to know if it's cured or not. Let's find out together. <gasps> nice. It didn't stick at all. <sighs> it's done then. I think that's the end of this video. Um, thanks for watching. I'm, I don't know. I might have like a little cutie pie moment of like showing you how everything looks before and after, but officially I think we're done. Thanks for sticking with me through this. It's been like four months. Okay, that might be dramatic. Or is it? Wait, wait, wait. I started before, maybe like four months. Okay, um, but we're done.